Hey, how are we doing? Good evening, everybody. It is showtime. Lots of notes I took uh, from the last live show and from some of the videos. I'd asked for feedback on things going on. Um, and I wrote down a whole bunch of notes on what everybody pretty much said, which I'll discuss some of the issues. Some other ones were brought up in front of me as well, too, so I'll address those as well. Um, on the overall front, everything is honestly going fairly well, I have to say. And for most what I get feedback from everybody else, the same thing is going on. There's a lot of stuff to purchase for those who can go out. Um, I mean, a lot of stuff from what I personally see around here. I only messed with a few postcards the other day. Um, I don't really need to get anything right this minute, but um, there's a lot out there. I'm not going to gobble up a bunch around here. If somebody else, you know, gets to it, I'm not really concerned. Um, <clears throat> other than that, you know, we're going to touch on some of the issues, shipping issues and some other things here. And I want to ask some other folks questions on if things have been happening to them as well on some of the other issues that have been brought to my attention. Not just by a couple people, but I got about a dozen people. Might as well, let's just shoot this out here now. I'll bring it up again later just so if you missed the beginning. I had probably 14 or 15 people who said that um, they do not use um, allow offers and throughout the time they keep getting them added to all of their listings after the fact. Now, if that's happened to somebody else, I'd be interested to know um, because, again, I've got a lot of people who are saying that's happening. Whether that's something eBay is forced on people or not, I don't see anywhere where it says they're allowed or able to just go in there and change your listings like that. Maybe I missed something, but uh, I don't personally see it in there. And I did look. Um, you know, that's that's what I see. Now, I know at one point they had a button, uh, and if you missed the button, it automatically added that feature, but you could turn it off and then it wouldn't be on there again. Um, m maybe that was it was what I was first thinking, but there's just far too many people telling me that listings um, were being added with that option in there. I personally use it on almost every listing I have. I think there's like 37 listings I have up that don't have best offer only because they're a cheaper uh, you know, item. And if somebody watches that cheaper item, it still shows up under the offers to watchers option. So you can still send out an offer to those watchers, even on the cheap items, even if you don't have a best offer option on it. It still gives you that opportunity to do it just FYI. So, you know, the cheaper items, at a certain point, I don't want to sell something below a certain dollar. They're mostly things that have been up for a while, and we're just trying to blow them out at some point. Again, I still run some things into auctions uh, regardless. I had, um, I think Carl asked the question on the bottle caps. Those are auction things. Most of those kind of things are auction. If you haven't seen the video, I got a video on um, junk that people sell. Um, I've sold these many, many, many times. I have some here right now even. Um, part of the reason why I did the video. Sometimes when I turn up with something, I end up doing a video on it too. Now I got a video coming out on, uh, well, I'll just leave it be. There's a Bolo video coming out with some really interesting things. Everything shown in the video is from our personal inventory. Um, and it's going to show you a wide variety of a certain niche. Um, that one's coming out too. Um, again, lots of issues with eBay, not just eBay. I had some issues on Amazon too, where I couldn't uh, sell similar and stuff on Amazon. Um, and it wouldn't let me edit on other ones. And then on some, it gave me a condition that um, the image was bad or something, I think it was, uh, image quality, and it turned them deactivated on it, which there was nothing wrong with them. I just ended up re-uploading the same pictures and it went away and didn't do it again. So I don't know if that's just some temporary glitch or not. I've had glitches here on YouTube for those who do YouTube as well, where I couldn't look at any comments at all. Whenever I click on comments, it would just spin, spin, spin. I ended up having to send a video of it happening to YouTube for the tech department to look into it. It was, it was really annoying because you could see them. It would attempt to load and then just kept coming up with the little... Um, the monkey and the wrench thing, uh, retry, reload the page, which was very, very annoying. Let's see who's on today. Uh, let's see here. Let me pop up to the beginning. 
Duncan from Australia, how are you doing? I've had other people tell me they can't ship. Probably 60 or 70% have had issues shipping to Australia, while others have had no issues whatsoever shipping on multiple days to Australia. So maybe it's hit or miss. It might not necessarily be eBay. There may be some issue with postal uh, employee issues too. Now, I talked to a, a postal employee for a little while um, the other day, and apparently there was some locations that had no or almost no employees in the facility because of sickness or not wanting to come to work or, you know, who knows what else was going on. So mail wasn't getting through at one point. And then when they finally got staffed, they just flooded people with mail. It was like a Christmas time thing going on. So there is issues going on. With the Australia issue I brought up the other day, it's not on any list of delays or anything like that. And I've had many, many people, too, far too many to say that it's just some thing that, that mail is going through still to Australia, small packets and things. I don't think they're doing big boxes, if I'm not mistaken. I think it can't be over a certain weight or something. Um, or you can send it, but they're, they're just delaying those packages. And if you didn't see, the U.S. Post Office has made delays across the board on uh, you uh, priority, first class, the whole works. They added another day or two, I think, on is, is the basics of it. I've had to open like seven missing packages cases. I've had to refund. Well, I didn't necessarily have to. He didn't ask for a refund, but I just refunded him his money apologize and he says you didn't have to do that and at the end of the day i said look if it shows up you know let me know and um you know i'll check it in a month or so or whatever the case may be and he said just send me an invoice so if i don't get the money out i don't get the money out of it i'd rather just have someone you know comfortable that we're going to take care of it again he didn't ask that's just what i do when it's happened like that before because the tracking was literally lost for I think 12 days I filed a report it showed one more tracking and then nothing so you know um, again all the other ones have showed up we actually had a couple coming our way that uh, were questionable on whether they were going to show up and they showed up like two weeks late I mean literally it was um, tied up in the same facility I don't know how many of you watch or look at your um, tracking ever but if you look at it you'll get kind of a gist on where it goes from where to where you know and I know most of the local ones and the the main ones coming from certain areas and you know stuff like that and you'll see where they get hung up a lot like there's a one in Phoenix that they get hung up and then Allen Park here they get hung up in a lot um, and then I had one I Wilmington I want to say I had one uh, hung up there on well not one but a couple hung up coming through there as well too Penny, let's see here. I have some more designs. Yes, um, I have to turn them in, and then they have to. I have to wait for them to be approved. Basically, I, I don't know if somebody physically looks at them, but all the ones down there are going to be gone, and I'm putting something totally different, more eye appealing. Um, I des they're already done. It's nothing fancy, but there there's a bunch that will help you. Um, and you'll see, the minute you see them, I would imagine you'll see what I'm talking about. I didn't order any as of yet, but um, I have to wait to approval to do that. I would like to order a couple, maybe give a couple away or something before I um, put them live. Whatever day they go live, I'll probably give a couple away or something, maybe half a dozen. I don't know. I'll, I'll give a couple away to folks on the live show, but you'd have to be on the live show to do it. So just FYI for those who may be interested. Um, and the ones that are helpful don't, I mean, they're not advertising per se me. It's got just my channel name really small and the rest of it's the important stuff. So, you know, it's not like a big channel advertisement or anything like that. And they're, they're cheap. They're not going to be very expensive. Hey, Gabe, how are you doing? Bookkeeping, bookkeeping is always essential. I'm going to be doing some of that this weekend in all honesty, I got to catch up. I've been slacking off. I've just been writing stuff down and not filing receipts and stuff like that. I mean, I, I got a little folder, and at the end of a certain time, I usually do it, but I've waited a little too long. Uh, hey, Bob, how are you doing tonight? Um, for those in Patreon, tomorrow I'm live in Patreon at 2 o'clock. Um, I've got notes to go over for a few things, and then we're going into... Um, I've got two new folks who want um, store reviews. This weekend, too, and I've already shot part of it. For those, again, a Patreon, this is this is another page. If you're interested, I have a Patreon page. It is a paid service. Um, but um, 
uh, I've got a video coming out for postcards too, which I did one the other day. Everybody thought that was um, great and it was very helpful. So that's another one from photos posted up right now in the community tab and Patreon. So for those, if you want to see that and you like the last one on there, I got another one coming out on Saturday or Sunday. I, I just have to finish editing it, and that's literally it. And again, tomorrow, live Patreon at 2 o'clock. Uh, Applebee's, Applebee's Attic Treasures, how are you doing? Regina, good evening, Regina. Cornelius, how are you doing as well? Amazon Seller 99, hey, I haven't seen you on here in a while. Things are going fairly well, I have to say. Um, for Amazon sellers, let's. Amazon's got sales throughout the store right this very second that aren't like they're not putting up the tags. I guess maybe they don't have enough staff. I don't really know what the issue is, but if you go into the store with your own, with their app on your phone and open it up when you're in the store. Don't open it up before you're in the store. In fact, I got some sales on there. But if you open it up in the store. All the scans you do in the store will be that store's prices. And I found a bunch of stuff way cheaper than the uh, tag prices on there, cheaper than the clearance and the whole work. So if you're looking for that kind of stuff, I would say it's all over the place. They just haven't put the tags out. So I don't know what yours looks like if you're if you're a um, RA and you do FBA, but right now is a pretty darn good time. There haven't been as many people going out, so it looks like it's built up in the store, and you might be able to get a few carts you know, with, with a couple hours of time digging through the store. But again, use your phone and open up the Walmart app. You can actually get free Walmart uh, Wi-Fi if you don't have access inside the buildings. I know some of the Walmarts, I don't know if it's the roof or they've got an inhibitor or something, but um, I can't get signals sometimes on some of the Walmarts we run into out of town and stuff. So just FYI, if you literally go to your your phone's um, internet access, you'll see one that says Walmart access. I don't know what the exact wordage it uses, but you'll obviously know it's Walmart. It'll say free, and boom, you've got free access to Walmart Wi-Fi, and you can use their app and check any price in the store um, whatsoever. Even if it's not on sale, you're going to find some stuff in certain categories that's on sale. So if you're unaware, it's a good time right now. I was quite surprised to find a lot of stuff that were marked down $10, $15 on some items that were marked down that much less than what the tag said. And this is already clearance items. So just for a couple bucks, I was getting, you know, $30, $40 items. So just FYI, I'm not going to holler out specifics because, you know, if, if you want to, you, you can figure out how to find them yourself just as easily. I'm not just going to give you everything until I've found my area. But uh, anyway, there's stuff out there right now, I'm, I'm sure you of all the backups. They've got certain inventory that have been blown out. They're not bringing certain inventory in. Certain, you know, things aren't selling, so it's backed up uh, in certain areas. Not everywhere, of course, but anyway. Ronda Rose, how are you doing? I see Craig Landshark Picker is in the house, too. Hope you are doing well also. Things are going pretty good here. Uh, we'll probably have employees back within the week, I am thinking, one at a time, unfortunately. Um, just for distance wise and to be safe. Um, we've been just going over that in our heads and watching the numbers here locally, but uh, that looks like what's going to happen. Jesse, how are you doing? Well, good to have you on the show tonight. I'm going to sourcing tomorrow and have a few questions if you have the time. Thank you. Welcome to put questions in the feed. I answer them in the order they come in. Um, usually I do not get to the end questions just because of time. Um, I am long-winded. I'll be the first to tell you that. So uh, let's pop on down here. Back to Bob for a second. Garage sales and estate sales opening up here, but I have so much back stock. I'm not buying, so not going to sales for a while. Yeah, I haven't been to any sales like that. Um, I did pick up with a private thing some postcards. In fact, I've got some here, um, and there's some nice New York ones in here. Um, I might show these in a haul video, so I'm not going to poke them out tonight, but... Um, some really good ones here for almost nothing, uh, probably 20, 30 buck a piece, RPPCs, uh, military ones to early ones like Pancho Villa area or era and stuff like that. So fairly excited, dirt cheap. Um, I should make some good money on those kind of things. If you don't know, real photo, real picture postcards 
go for a lot of money. I mean, we've sold some in the $1,000 range for one single postcard, real photo, real picture postcard. Oh, those kind of go for so much because there could be only like, say, 10 of them. There could be just one of one of those types. You could buy a kit take a picture with one of these cameras. I think even a brownie of like a modified brownie maybe at that point would even do it. And it would literally develop with the back already stamped on it with a postcard back. So you could do a one-off postcard of like family. You'll see like family member postcards. Other ones are done like modern day, how people do Christmas cards. They'll have a studio take a photo of their family for Christmas. I'm talking like circa 1910. And they would send some out. So there might be 10 or 20 of something like that. Uh, a town may, uh, a guy would go around back then and take photos in cities. And that's how he made it a living. And postcards back then, uh, RPPC might sell for two cents. A standard Junko postcard might have sold for a penny. You know, um, so he made his living by develop developing them. I don't know if he had a booth or they did it in a hotel room, which I know some did that, but I don't know if that's the majority. And then they would sell them locally to, you know, the vendors. So like a pharmacy at the time, like a dry goods store or something might buy a hundred of them and put them on a rack. Because there was racks back then, just like there are today of postcards. I've I've got a postcard of a postcard rack from like 1910 sitting in a old country store here in Ohio City. Um, one of those ones I'm not selling, but uh, they're always neat to find stuff like that. Like finding a, a photograph of a photographer, like him taking a photograph. Those are always neat to me. I always keep stuff like that. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Carl, how are you doing? I just called out something you brought up uh, earlier, just FYI. Max, how's Max doing? Jason, welcome. Greg Vallejo, I hope that is pronounced right. First live show for me, but I do watch all your videos. Well, good to have you on for tonight. Let me slide down here. My feed sometimes gets frozen, so it looks like everything's running fine on our end here. So, uh, Greg, I keep getting messages from eBay telling me your item can now accept offers to items that didn't allow offers on. So they're adding it in and then at least sending you something. I, I hate when they decide what's best for your own listings. I know to some extent there's a certain percentage of people that don't understand how that works or haven't been on long enough to get it, but I think, you know, that should be the ponderance of the person listing the item. Leave it the way they have it and be done with it. That's my opinion. I would never do any feature that changed something for somebody without their prior knowledge to me being able to do that. Maybe there's some clause. Maybe I'll have to pull out the entire um, uh, policy when you sign up and see what it says because maybe that's in there. I didn't look through line by line on everything, but uh, maybe that is in there. I'll have to look. Uh, Elena, sneaking offers onto listings has been going on for at least a year. Wow, that's interesting to know. I had to give in and just raise prices. Sometimes they send a nice message saying, your item now accepts offers. There's another one saying the same thing. I have not seen that because, again, all but like 30 some odd items have that option already on it. I price accordingly. Um, if I don't like the offer, I just, you know, turn it down instantly. No big deal. And then I move on. I don't pay any attention to it. I far these days sell more items through offers to watchers than I do get offers on some days. Not every day, but if I get as many days, I can send out like 60 or 70 offers to watchers a day. And I keep up on them nowadays. I do them all the time throughout the entire day. And it's really bumped up my numbers across the board. And I mean a considerable amount, enough so that I haven't even done any more sales. Mine, I think the last group of sales that I did, the mark markdown and um, sales, I think I got them all ending on the 29th. And I don't think I'm doing any more uh, until I see how, how things keep on progressing with everything opening up. I figure sales may drop a little bit as things open up because people won't be on their phone as much or, you know, sitting at a laptop or at home. They'll try and get out and do some things, a certain percentage. You know, either way, there'll be a certain percentage that isn't going to rush out and worry about things. So there still will be some, I would say, increases over a standard summer for the people who sell everyday stuff, you know, not necessary collectibles. Collectibles they sell all year round. So I never really worry too much about the collectible side of our business. 
like in in summer, I'll, I'll give you guys a hint because I get this question listing certain things during the year. When summer rolls and collectibles sell all the time either way. So I may list more collectibles than anything else as opposed to like NOS. And somebody asked what NOS is, new old stock. It's brand new merchandise that just never sold from a store and will buy it in bulk or sometimes you can get pallets of that stuff as well. I'm talking about never opened, not damaged returns or anything like that kind of pallet for uh, eBay or anything I'm, or Amazon. I'm literally talking about NOS you, you go to an auction and there's a bunch of NOS there. That's that's what NOS is, new old stock. Um, so um, totally lost the train of thought on that one. That one just kind of went out of my mind. It's been a long day. Um, let's just pop back to some questions here anyway. I need to get some questions out of the way. Uh, Jeffrey, how are you doing this evening? Crystal, welcome as well. And I got Rich right below. Hey, Rich, how are you doing? You're on almost every live show. Uh, Regina's on quite often too. Yes, I have had some listings where eBay has added best offer and then will also put a minimum offer limit on lots of items. I have to go in and take the minimum limit off. Yeah, that's really annoying. I can see that. You know, that's why people get aggravated with eBay when they do stuff like that. I don't really worry about that on any other platform. I don't like someone micromanaging my business who doesn't know my business just because they run the platform. Every pers every business on eBay does it differently, and to assume that they want to do it this way or that way is just, it's offensive to some extent because it doesn't acknowledge that you have your own knowledge or experience to do it the way that best suits you, you know. If you're doing like always having offers to watchers, you do have to do a little different ploy with your pricing. And again, I do that ploy. I've talked about it. That's our number one um, reason we do make a little more money on many, many items, or a lot of money more on, on many items, because of the way we price and market the items themselves. I mean, there's a lot to it. I, I mean, it's it's not just, you can't just price everything high, and you can't price certain items high at all. you got to be strictly with the market, or even, in many cases, a little below the market. You know, I did a, a, a little one on uh, repricers, and, you know, I had a lot of people, who in the heck would ever want a repricer? That's just for scammers or racing to the bottom. A repricer doesn't necessarily go down on price. A repricer, you can set it to go up. You set it so uh, it doesn't go below a certain amount. You can do all kinds of things. You can be a dollar, two dollars over your competitor who maybe has less feedback or, or worse feedback than you. So it doesn't mean you have to go in and do it less than somebody else. It means that you can go over what they do as well, too. But again, you got to have some other option or offer them something that your competitors aren't. So a repricer works both ways. You can raise them and you can lower them. You set every single aspect. And now this just isn't just with eBay's um, street price or whatever the one they were using. I don't remember the name. I think it was street pricer. But all of them do that. Every repricer I've ever seen and all the ones I've ever touched and used, all you could do anything you wanted with it. It didn't have to be down. It doesn't mean you're racing to the bottom. Like in, in stuff that I would put it on, things on Amazon or something specifically, I, I do price over certain people, but again, I am a, f a feedback nut on stuff like that. So I see that feedback does rule the roost in many items that people order, especially these days, because as people get ripped off more and more by, you know, scrupulous people just coming in and newbies and stuff, no offense to anybody that's new, but there are... There's a group of, of new ones with less feedback are usually the ones that I see on Amazon because Amazon shuts them down. I don't mean newbie as a new to selling. I mean new as in a, a new listing, I should say, on, on Amazon. So once people have been ripped off so many times, they look at feedback. Feedback comes into play. You order a shirt, maybe you didn't get ripped off, but the shirt doesn't match the image. That's a big one if you order clothes off Amazon you got to only order from brands that you already know, basically, uh, specifically, because the, the shirts just are it's a horrid situation. All the overseas, even the ones that are printed here by some of the companies that do shirt designs, Teespring even to some extent, um, has issues with when they show up. It just doesn't match the, the design or the image and stuff. And that's why feedback is important. And that's why even on Amazon, you can charge higher than everybody else. And I don't even worry... 
if other people, a bunch of other people are lower, because eventually they'll run out of certain items. It depends on what they're selling. And then I'll still get my high prices for the items. So I'm not going to give them away just because everybody else is. And you can build that into the repricer too. So, you know, you can, you know, not go down unless the price drops or does something else. You can have it flag you and you can go manually and check it out. You know, there's it does everything. I mean, any of them do that pretty much these days. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Mike, how's Mike doing? I got Carolina Picks. How are you doing as well? Again, live show Carolina um, tomorrow on Patreon. Mike, you as well, I'm sure. Steve, hey, Steve, same there. How are you doing well? J&J &J Flippin' Couple, how are you two doing? Have not seen you or had a chance. Your son finally, well, well glad to hear, glad to hear. So uh, hopefully, I don't know if he's home for good. Um, I'm not going to say what he does. Uh, J and J are, are a very nice couple. Um, anyway, I'm not going to go into too much details. I don't want to call out people, uh, but good to hear. I, I completely would feel relieved to uh, see my my kid after he's been gone for that long. I'm I'm glad to see ours when they're gone for a week or something for like a trip or something. But again, family, you know. Max, how's Max doing? Not for Amazon picture. I do recreate the size with Photoshop. Are you a collector? Good evening. Thanks for doing this weekly live. I always look forward to it. Well, glad to hear. Glad to have you on. Who's your hustler? How are you doing? No Aussie issues with Chessie. Yeah, some people said they did and some people didn't. And I do ship to Australia fairly often. It is one of the countries that I had active. Um, you can print from pirate ship or PayPal, depending on what you're sending. Now, some packages, there's still issues with it not allowing you to send from what I personally saw. Um, and you may have to go to the post office and manually have it uh, tagged and uh, labeled and shipped out from there. Unfortunately, I don't like doing that. But Stephen, how are you doing? Duncan's from Australia, too. I've got two or three folks from Australia on right now, it looks like. Sending and receiving the national mail, no problems. And Aust just slow. Can't ship to India, though. Yeah, India's having an issue there right now. Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, uh, good evening as well. Yeah, I did see India was on there with a, a surge as well, the pandemic. Yeah, Jesse, I do the same thing. Partial, total refund on uh, the delays. I didn't even ask. I just gave him a full refund every dime he paid and, and just ended it off there. It was a uh, 1870s sheet music. I'm more bothered that something that old that's been around. It's a rare piece um, for banjo music as well. It was a booklet, um, something you're just not going to find. Um, sat around all this time and then got lost in the mail. I mean, it's, it's a sad thing uh, for the item itself. And I understand if I lost an item, I, I, you know, would want my money back, of course. I don't know who you can technically blame. I wouldn't blame the bot, the seller, but I still just give it out. It's it's goodwill and, you know, it, it very rare. That's the first time I think it's happened in, geez, I don't know, at least a year maybe I would gather. I can't think of a time, and I'm really trying to think. I can't think of a time when I've had to do that in anywhere in the modern day age of, of our business. You know, it just doesn't happen. Crystal, how are you doing? Uh, where am I going? Let's make sure I didn't lose something here. My feed does bounce over. Uh, let's see here. Jesse, quick question. When you were doing bookkeeping, do you simply divide the number of items by dollars? We need to buy a thousand things for a thousand. Do you book them at a dollar a piece? I don't like to answer any questions like that specifically because it really depends on your own specific business. There are many ways to keep inventory in this this type of business. The IRS even lists things you can and can't do on the IRS's main page for small businesses. Read that over. I would honestly recommend calling an accountant if you have that specific type of question. I don't like to give accounting uh, information because I don't want somebody later on to be upset because they did something based on my business. My business is not your business. I have different things that we do than most other people do. We have other branches of the business. We actually have... Um, 
even other named companies that fall under our personal business. So how I do my filing is going to be different than other people do them. You can do cash basis in some aspects and in other types of businesses you cannot. So I would literally talk to an accountant. Usually, if you can find one of the decent ones in your area, they will give you a first consultation, usually 30 minutes. Some of them do 20, but they will give you that much for free trying to get your business. So that's what I would honestly recommend doing. You know, I don't know what the logistics would be right now with the pandemic, but I am almost assuredly that there would be some, you know, pay, uh, capabilities of somebody to do that. You don't have to get close. You can sit 10 feet away on another side of a desk or something and listen to it. But I would honestly talk to an accountant with that specific question. Um, we actually changed our uh, the way we kept inventory after we started it, after we came up with issues. So you're allowed to do stuff like that too, but you can only do it like you, you can't constantly change. You've got to change it once and then give a viable reason, at least have a viable reason at why you changed it and go from there. Um, everything that we do has been run through our accountant. I, I have two of them, one for our labor and payroll and then one for our tax aspect of it. Our tax aspect also files nowadays uh, what sales tax I have left to deal with. I do sell on other sites besides eBay, so I do still have to worry about filing some uh, state taxes, uh, sales tax. So keep that in mind when you're doing this, that not all sites are the same when it comes to stuff like that. You know, you can... I don't. I just hate to give out that kind of information. I took accounting and and um, business management and all those classes in college, and and I there, I, I don't want to speak for your business. I guess I should say just talk to an accountant. Um, you know, my opinion in that aspect of it should not um, uh, be taken only because I say your business is different. Unless you talk to an accountant, you could be judging by my business and, and judge wrong. Different states have some different rulings. The federal government are standard across all states, but some states have secondary considerations that you will have to look into because you not only file your federal taxes, but you file your state. And whatever way you do it, you want to make sure it's okay with your state as well as coincides with uh, best practices for the federal tax that that's again my best judgment i am not an accountant and i don't really like to make um accounting recommendations no offense whatsoever on that at all um you know in the past i have personally with people i know i have discussed uh some of that but i, I don't like to do that honestly very often so uh no offense yeah carl there'll be another postcard one you can see the photos right now on the community tab on patreon Postcards are always good, Jesse. I have 100,000. I don't know. I've got a lot. It could be close to 100,000 sitting here. I haven't went through some of them in a very long time either. Uh, let me slide down here. Cindy, welcome. First time going through a box of very uh, varied uh, Ethereum that is totally overwhelming me. Take a few pieces out at a time and look them up one by one and take your time. Um most of the time, if you're getting a big box of it, you probably didn't pay much for it. So you can take your time and do a few a night and keep up with the rest of your business. Pick out what looks like it would be the best stuff out of there and look that up first. And at least put those items up to get your money back for the investment. And that way, you already got it returned on it. You can spend the money somewhere else and then take your time to look up the rest of it. That's how I started doing this. That way, I am not killing my business. I'm not you know, locking up money that I don't have. Most all of my back stock, and I've got hundred a couple hundred thousand pieces of back stock and i'm not exaggerating is probably about free other than a recent purchase of some um uh, buttons and things like that i just bought a couple grand i think it's like four thousand i think i've got invested in uniform and shirt buttons right now um hey annie how are you doing a box of a For, yeah, I know a lot of people do the box and the bag and all that stuff too. I, I mean, I charge for shipping. I keep it as cheap as I can, but I don't go out through all that extra effort. Most of my stuff, if it's under sixteen or if sixteen ounces or less, goes first class. 
Um, if it's over that, it's usually priority. Uh, and most of the stuff that I send isn't over a certain weight anyway. It's usually probably about the cheapest rate you can probably get in the first place. I do use some of the flat rate bags. So occasionally you'll, you'll see me doing the, the, the box in there and stuff just for sheer protection of the item. I know Annie, I'm sure, wraps it very well. So you wrap it in a box. It might be more expensive in a box, but you can get a flat rate and actually be cheaper because of the weight on the box. Uh, Crystal, can't wait until I can become a Patreon. We are here. Um, it's $9.99 for Patreon, for those of you are just curious. I just, it's mostly just all videos. I think it's 160 some odd videos i do live so that doesn't count the live i think this is video live show number five or six set up for tomorrow i think it's at two uh eastern standard time for those in patreon fomoco 16 how are you doing well thank you very kindly hey nancy how are you doing this evening nancy let me see if i can get my feed is frozen there we go Sometimes, again, my feed gets frozen. Uh, let's see here. Vintage cigarette cases. Just keep in mind that cigarettes, um, packs of cigarettes, there still is some legal aspect you do have to worry about, even if it's vintage because it still is tobacco. Um, so just be cautious on selling stuff like that. I don't sell um, sealed packs of cigarettes at all, uh, just because, again, it's a, technically you could run into a problem with the ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms because of the tobacco in there, and you don't have a license to sell tobacco. Uh, I know a friend who owns a store, and he has a tobacco license, so if I really wanted to, I am sure I could, you know, put it on like a... Uh, I don't know, like a, a contract with him just to sell those items possibly, or at least I fill, uh, facilitate the sale itself, and then he handles the final end sale possibly. There's ways around it as long as it's legal, I guess is the point. Uh, let's see here. Gabe, thinking about a strategy for when you go back sourcing. I can tell you around here there's a backlog of sales. A lot of stuff's happened. A lot of people, unfortunately, have passed enough to create a, an overflow of of uh, estate sales. Um, I don't know what the flea markets are going to look like. I don't have any goals to rush out and get to one. I don't really go to many like that these days. Again, I do have pickers um, that usually can supply me anything I want. Right now, I'm flush with, with inventory, and I do mean flush with inventory. Um, I'm literally running out of space. I did do a couple hauls only because I had to meet with a couple of pickers. You don't want to lose your pickers. Once you get somebody like that, they need to make money off you to make it viable. If, if you don't come out and you keep saying, no, I don't need anything from them, eventually somebody else will keep showing up and they'll think of them as number one. You need to be the first choice of a picker to uh, you know, be able to do anything with that too. Got 150 people on. If you haven't hit the thumbs up and you're enjoying the conversation, please hit that thumbs up button here for me to show some love to the channel. Uh, let's see here. Let's pop down a little bit farther. We'll talk about a few more things here in just a little bit. I'll try to get to as many questions. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go real late tonight. I know I always end up going past the time. I'd like to try and keep it to an hour or so. Uh, let's see here. One question is whether it is worth putting vintage motel directories up. I have learned that Howard Johnson's is valuable. Main companies like early in, in, in car, uh, like the early days, I should say, like going way back, like uh, the first 10, 15 years of Howard Johnson's, those are probably some really primo ones. I do ones from Las Vegas. I usually list ones around Disney World and stuff like that. California ones can do very well. Any of that brochure stuff, I mean, if it's some oddball place, there's some just interesting looking building ones, like in California, um, motels, hotels, any of that stuff I usually try to get. Keys, uh, specialty towels that have the hotel name on it are always great. The fobs for the keys or the tags that went with the keys, even if you can't find the, t the key itself, even like personal keychains that you could sell you know for your own keys all that kind of stuff with hotel information i always buy 
it goes in the collectibles travel section uh, and it goes very well. And you can just put it by the state that it comes from. That's where I always list all of that stuff. Brochures, I, I do like brochures. The older, the better. Airline ones are usually good too. World War II era or before are really what you want. Early 1920s and before, California ones can go for some horrendous money. We sold one from California. And I'm sure I showed it before, but we've got almost $300. And it was from, oh, geez, I can't think of the golf course. There's a golf course, really well-known national golf course there. And it was all ripped up. It was from the 1800s. But we got like $300 for this thing and just totally trashed out condition. Again, it, it, it was a brochure from an early age when you just don't see them anymore. The earlier, the better on that kind of stuff. Uh, Cindy, on the, the greeting cards, I don't care if they're signed or not. As long as it's a decent card, um, just like postcards, it doesn't matter if it's filled out, not filled out or not. Um, my dog's down here and hair's floating, it feels like. It doesn't matter at all. Um, some of the ones, like a Disney one or something like that, are worth more if they're not filled out. But they're still worth listing even if they are filled out. The best ones you, you could get, obviously, would be in a box with the envelopes unused. Those are what you really want. Just like Halloween uh, greeting cards and things like that that you see, or invitations for Halloween and stuff. Box versions can go for like 10 times what individuals selling separately can go for in some cases. That box artwork is great on stuff like that. Yeah, that may be too, Annie, with the uh, RPPCs. It may have been something they just got developed there. I have seen kits, though, that the paper already has that printed on the back and it's developed already or something along that line. There also are some, what's it called, sun images where you can sun develop, I guess, the, the back of the postcard on it too. Some of those are the kind that fade and you, you'll barely able to see them at the end of the day. They actually had uh, trade cards where you'd get the negative and then you'd get photo paper and you'd just set the negative on the photo paper out in the sun and it would actually uh, expose it and it would develop over a few minutes or something on time on its own. You didn't have any fluid or anything to develop it. If you ever see those, those go very, very well. I've had Dick Tracy and Tom Mix versions of those as well as some World's Fair ones of those. They're really small uh, trading cards. They came in little packets, and the packets are made out of like almost like a grocery, the brown grocery bags is what they look like. Kind of like the packets, the the internal packaging on a mark set, how they bag the individual figures in the paper bags. That's kind of how those remind me, but they're small ones. Uh, let's see here. Stephen Jenkins, Australia Post to U.S. takes three weeks now. Yeah, I want to say it used to take about 10 days or so, uh, usually from the ones that I've seen. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you on. I am doing good. I have not had much time to do anything. I can't wait to get employees back. Just again, I'll have more time to do other things. I've got some stuff I want to get on the other channel up just to finish off a series and then move on to something else. But things just not been so great in there. Disney Five uh, Family Five Fifteen. Yes, we did hit twelve thousand feedback on eBay. Thank you. I think Duncan's ahead of me by like a thousand or two thousand. I don't worry about feedback as long as it's a hundred percent. Once you get so much feedback, I don't think it really matters. All they look at is you've done a ton of sales, and you've got a hundred percent or darn close to it is what you really want. Um, again, I, I look at that when I buy stuff. I don't want any issues in any way I can reduce my risk of having an issue buying something um, is what I do. And again, I buy bags and shipping supplies and things like that offline because it's cheaper. And you don't want any issues if you're buying it for your business. You don't want to have anything affect your business, something not show up or have to deal with it because you might have to order another one until you get your money back and all that other stuff. So no matter what we buy, I always try to buy from people with the best feedback. Uh, let's see here. Romper Room. I remember Romper Room. I do remember watching Romper Room in kindergarten, believe it or not. The 
there was a very famous artist with that same last name, Greg. That's why. And it's somebody I really uh, admire, and I've got all of his, him and his wife's books. So, anyway, David and LV, how are you doing? Well, thank you very kindly. Glad to have you on. Sending the offers to people who simply viewed the listing, not always watchers. Yeah, I would believe that's probably the case sometimes um, from what I see, but I get enough sales out of it, so I'm going to keep doing it regardless of who they're going to. Ridge Hill Jilly, how are you doing? Doing very well on this end. Things are going fairly well, as I said. Uh, let's just touch on this just for a minute here. Um, one of the ones that I get quite often now, especially when I'm researching, and I don't know if, if I look on Terapeak like multiple times every single day of the week. The other day for the Terapeak, the only ones I could see a picture on were the ones that were showing up still in the last 90 days of completed. So if you're looking on Terapeak, what would it be? 75% of all of them had no images. They were just gone on all of Terapeak for like a day almost. And uh, a lot of times when I'll click on the ones that are in completed listings through Terapeak, mind you, it'll come up and say, it's not you, it's us. But if I go in from completed listings, I can see that same listing without any issue. That was one of the issues that I personally had. And I've had a couple other people say they've had similar issues when they're trying to do research. Terapeak obviously has good information, but the only aggravation I have with Terapeak and my biggest... Uh, complain about the whole thing is that you can't look at the listing and see a big image of it. You can only see the thumbnail. Now, of course, you can blow up the percentage of screen, which will increase the size of those thumbnails to almost screen size if you really want, but it's just a nuisance to go back and forth. I know you can set it up so you can just alt tab and pop it back and forth, but it's just a nuisance to do that. It would be nice if you could look at the listings. I know I think that's a service that they want to charge for. Hence the whole idea of giving you just enough information, but not a, a lot of great information. Um, it, it's like a cheap version of WorthPoint is what I take it. I don't pay for WorthPoint. I'm not saying it's bad, but many, many times I get people lately since I talked about WorthPoint telling me that they've had, you know, bad, bad results from WorthPoint, you know. They'll suggest that they have prices before you sign up, and then once you sign up, they say that they don't have a price for the item. They just quoted that they did. So a little bit of misleading uh, ads, if that is the case. Again, I, I don't know either way. I haven't had worth point. I do pay for PopSyke, and I've said that before. With records being a huge chunk in one of our biggest categories that we make the most percentage of profit in, you know, I want to make sure I'm correct on my prices. And I'll, I'm going to say this again. I've said it in other videos. I don't just sell records on eBay. I don't just sell postcards on eBay. I don't just sell toys and stuff like that on eBay. I sell vintage on other platforms, including Amazon. So if I quote you a price on something, I don't necessarily think about, hey, it's going to be sold on this side. I don't care really where it goes. I just care about what I'm going to get out of it. So if I say a price, it doesn't necessarily mean it's selling on eBay. You know, those of you who have seen some of my other stuff, you know I don't just sell on, on eBay. So prices, to me, it doesn't, I don't care where it sells. I don't care. As long as it sells on the platform that's going to give me the most money, that's what makes me happy. So if I can get 50 bucks more selling it on eBay or Etsy or, or one of the other hips or any of the other platforms, that's what I would rather do. I'm not going to worry about selling it or worry about it selling on, say, eBay if it sells for more on other platforms. You play the game. It is a game to some extent. You have to figure out how to navigate the game and, and win at it, I guess, is the, the end result. You know, reselling game, I guess you could say. So, you know, figure out where you make the most money for certain things. Some crafts sell better on, on Etsy. Some crafts sell better on, on Homemade by Amazon or on Amazon, Homemade on Amazon. You know, it's still a viable uh, platform, so just FYI. Hey, Thomas. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Tomorrow, uh, before the live show, I'm going to look at the photos in there. Um, I will probably just add those in, in, and we'll discuss them on live, maybe. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at them. Um, and I'll discuss how to post a bunch of photos on Patreon to the same image as well. Um, on that one for you. But I will address those tomorrow for sure before the live show. I'll look at them and maybe I'll bring them up even on the live show tomorrow. 
Carl, lots of watchers are other resellers, but regardless, I too love the offer to watchers feature. That very well may, may be to some extent on that. My items, though, are so odd and bizarre for the most part, the ones that are watched. The chances of somebody else having the item that I have and that somebody's watching it, it's really pretty slim. In some cases, I've actually looked to see, because, I, again, I had the issue with um, what I personally believe is... Uh, People who I've blocked been able to contact me because of offers to watchers. And I wanted to look into, into who's watching stuff a little better. In many of the cases, there isn't one up. Again, that doesn't mean it's not a, a reseller, but I just think a lot of the items that I have are just out there bizarre. I don't. Maybe if you're selling something more common, yeah, that may be the case. And I know that probably is the case with some of my items, but not overall. Uh, let's see here. I wonder if I should get a repricer after I reach a certain number of listings. Unless you're selling volume and a lot of it in, in NOS, uh, FBA, and stuff like that, I wouldn't really worry about a repricer. A repricer only works for categories with a lot of information. I mean, I can't use it for vintage cards and things like that because I specifically price differently than most of the other people that would be my competitors intentionally. I'd rather sell one item for every two they sell do less work, but I'm still making a bigger percentage of profit off that item. That's that's pricing-wise. That's how my philosophy goes. I may sell less physical items, but I'm making more money than my competitors because of my pricing structure. Again, plus I sell on multiple platforms. I had some several people tell me that it doesn't matter selling on more than one platform. Um, you should if you're doing eBay's the perfect platform. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. I, I wrote that down just because I had some people confusing other people. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. So that would mean don't just sell on one platform. Make sure you have a backup for everything in your business whatsoever. Don't tie all your stuff up on one platform. The more people that see stuff you have for sale, the more people that we would buy it. So even if you're doing excellent, you think you're awesome, there's, you can't see a possible reason at all to sell on another platform, you don't have a clue whether that would be good or not because you haven't tried it. And I can tell you, I, I can't think of anybody who didn't branch out intelligently and, 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 and you know break it down by you know a little bit here, a little bit there until they knew it would work that didn't make a lot more money branching out. Again, the more people that see your items, the more items they're going to sell. It's, it's just a given. Like if you only got five items you're selling, the chances of making a ton of money on those five items you know, isn't great. But if you've got 100 items, 1,000 items, 10,000 items, 30, 40, 50, 70,000 or 80,000 items like in our range, you sell a lot. It, it's just a given. The more items you have, the more visibility you have in general because you got more items up. You know, and just like having a bunch of items in one specific category means that a large percentage of people who buy stuff in those categories is going to know who you are and eventually going to run into your stuff and will probably save it if they know you sell a bunch in that category. Now, these are mostly collector categories. Again, collectors collect. They're going to keep coming back for the same type of items. And those are the items where I make the most money in overall. Record collectors are collectors, so that's why records is always a return thing. If somebody collects Northern Soul records, they collect Northern Soul records, and they don't care what type of season it is. In the middle of summer, if a $4,000 Northern Soul record that they don't have, timing the derbies, let's say, shows up on swing or something, they're going to spend the $4,000 whatever season it is. It doesn't matter to them. They want the record. So it's hard for people who don't who aren't into collectibles to 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 get into that aspect of it. It's hard to to break away from, you know, selling specifics like clothing and books and stuff like that that have so many other things going on with them that it it's not like collectibles. In season, certain things sell, and this sells, and that sells. You got to rotate, and winter clothing, and summer clothing, and swimwear, and all that kind of stuff. There's just and then the competition alone. So. Uh, we're running long probably already. Oh, we still got a little bit of time here. Uh, let's see here. Let me slide down. Yeah, feedback definitely, Carl. Hang on my... There we go. I don't sell on Amazon. Would never use a repricer. I just list and forget. Best offer on some and uh, watch my watchers. Yeah, it depends on what you want to do. I'm not saying everybody has to do any other other site, but I don't put all my eggs in one basket. 
if you're not going to go to another site, and I'm, I, if I believe I'm correct, Carl it does Shopify as well, um, try something like Shopify. You can use your business from eBay to drum up business to your Shopify site. If you sell in niches, a Shopify site does work. You know, It, it just depends on what you do. That's the whole key on it, what you sell and, and how well you use your time. Uh, tomorrow, Annie, I think it's 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I think is the, the time. I've got it written down here. I've got a bunch of events going on with other things, so I don't remember for sure, but um, it's listed down on the alarm first thing in the morning going off. Hey, Michelle, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you on. C.S. Brown, thank you for the info on your channel. I've just started selling. Glad to have you. Play it safe is my best recommendation for someone new and understand how the platform works. Marie, how are you doing this evening? Good to have you on. Uh, I'm assuming that's your husband, too. I assume you both do it together, too, Marie, from what I have seen. I have looked at your profile, I think, once before. Captain Wackencracker, how are you doing? Peoria, huh? I don't know if I've been in Peoria. Dusk bump. How are you doing? Does anyone ever get dry periods on eBay? Seems to happen to me every seven to nine weeks for a few days at a time. No sales. I have a small store. Now, stuff like that, like a holiday, if you pay attention to the calendar, like uh, certain time frames before and after a major holiday are sometimes dead periods. Uh, a massive game going on on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday or something. A lot of people aren't thinking about buying at certain times like that. Right before certain holidays or, or stuff, certain things aren't going to sell. Uh, payday rotational uh, sales are, are in there too. Certain time after rent's paid, sales sometimes go up for certain people selling certain items. Uh, other times like we sell to uh, institutions like uh, colleges and things like that and businesses who do art and use vintage items. Those kind of things tend to go up during the end of the, the year, and then their sales will stagger off in the beginning because they'll want to see how much money they have left. And in many cases, they have to blow it before the end of the month if they get to keep it. Just like state you know, funding for repairs on the roads. If they don't use it one year, they can't carry it over to the next year. So you know, a lot of the stuff that we sell lives by calendars like that. Um, certain items sell because uh, like an event's going on tied to that item. Like a, not necessarily a sporting event. Um, I called out some with buttons on a Patreon video, but it's stuff like that that um, can reflect on how sales go, in all honesty. Just like certain things like school books and college books and things like that, or certain calculators go better certain times of the year, and then they just drop off. Like some of the graphing calculators, um, the expensive ones, like the 150 or higher calculators, the ones that go up in the $300 range. Those I can sell like mad at a certain, like a, uh, maybe a three-week time frame. And then after that, it just drops dead for a little while here because mostly the people who buy those are in college. Again, and most things you buy or sell, if you look hard enough, you can find a pattern of some extent as to how they, they sell. I've said this before. I, I have people that buy from me through an entire month. They, they won't pay till the end of the month. And it, it, it goes with like a payment schedule or, or how they get payments. It's a retired person and, and stuff. Very nice uh, a person. Um, and I've dealt with her for three and a half years maybe and stuff. And you get to know stuff like that. And, and you'll realize certain people live this way or that way or they're on retirement or pensions and things like that. So there's periods. Usually the end of the month, rent's due on the first. Most people have to the fourth or the fifth depending on who they're paying. Um, I think when we were renting a couple of houses, I think we allowed them to the fifth. So that's, I think, what the standard is. So in that time frame, you may not have sales from the first to the fifth. I mean, there's all kinds of things like that. Or every two weeks, people get paid and they usually use their extra money to buy this or buy that, like video games and things like that. People save up to the end of the month and you know, that, that's what I look at it. And I don't worry if I've got a dry spell for a three or four, five, six day period. I do projections and I look at the overall, what I'm supposed to do at the end of the month. As long as I'm still going up, 
you know, that's all I worry about. Now, let's say I get a dry spell and it doesn't end and things are going on. I'm going to be looking into why it's dropped off like that. What was I selling before that's not selling? And if certain things are selling, maybe I need to switch up what I have up and sell the items that are selling versus the ones that have just tanked overnight. Stuff like that happens. You know, there'll be, again, there might be events that you are totally unaware of that are going on. You know, with even holidays, a lot of people who start selling a collectibles don't pay attention to what holiday is going to be coming up soon and, and think about it. Or they'll wait till, oh, geez, you know, uh, it's it's uh, Valentine's Day in, in next week. I got to start putting my Valentine's stuff up. If you're putting your stuff up a week or two before Valentine's Day, people for buying stuff for Valentine's Day aren't going to be able to get it usually because it's not going to arrive in time. People buy holiday stuff, you know, a month in advance, sometimes two months in advance. Christmas stuff, we're selling... Uh, a lot of Victorian and things like that, paper collectibles now for people to make for Christmas stuff, which we we sell to the same people year after year. So, and they actually send me requests and things, which I got a video coming out about that as as well too, um, just to give people some more options and some more things to think about. Um, anyway, let's hop back to the questions here. I'll take a few more. We're right at the hour mark now. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, uh, Dusk Bump there. Uh, hang on. Yeah, I hate rare items getting lost. Uh, like, I've broken a few records that were, you know, from the 1910-20s era, and it's always depressing, not necessarily for the money, just that, you know, I've, I, this thing survived all this time, I rescued it out of, like, an old barn or something, and at the end of the day, I break it. It might have been the only one of these sitting around somewhere. Just because it's, it's a one-of-a-kind doesn't mean it's worth a lot of money. It just means that it's... You may never see another one, you know. It's not a monetary issue, in my opinion. It's a historical loss, more than anything. Dickethus, how are you doing? I've never even considered a reprice where I do my homework on the items that I sell. I mark it up uh, 10 30% higher than market and take best offer. It works for my business model, but it may be not yours. Yeah, again, it, it depends. Whatever works for you is what works for you. I can tell you what sells for us. I can tell you we sell certain things that people say there's no way you're selling it for that, even though that's what we sell it for. You've got to have... I'll just I'll just spend a minute on this here, and then I'll probably end it there. I can legitimize my prices for certain items when I mark them up because all of my prices in that same niche or category are all in that same range. And I've got enough in certain categories to... Uh, overwhelm the category with stuff in my range. So if people want to sell it, you know, they're looking at my comps, so they're going to have to price it by what I sell it for. The stuff that I've I've been selling, I've been selling for a long time, so people say, well, you're just marking up stuff and, and ripping people off. It's not worth that. These stuff are vintage. It's worth what people are are willing to pay for it, and I've determined a ballpark range from selling hundreds and hundreds of the same items that I can I can price them in, and I don't worry about what Joe Schmo prices them or the other ten people that may be selling in the same niche price them. It doesn't matter to me what they sell them for. My feedback, my my whole store is is like an ensemble of stuff that goes together, and it it shows an image of of a professional seller of these items, and they it, it's. It legitimizes, is all I can say, what we sell is, is the, the basics, I guess. I don't know how else to explain it. It, it. Whether someone is professional or isn't professional, appearances, the perceived value of something, the perceived image of that store, whatever you're looking at is what really matters. It doesn't matter what it's honestly worth for the most part. It, it comes down to what it's worth to them, and do they perceive it being worth that much? That's all that matters. Just like in an auction, when, when people bid something up to some astronomical number, um, it, 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 it doesn't mean anything what, what, what the numbers, the suggested sale price of an auction. For those in Patreon, I did that the button thing. Look at, the, look at that page, that other auction site, and look at the, uh, the, the, their suggested sale price versus what they actually sold for. That's, that's a perceived value variance. That means that the some of the items they may have perceived the value wrongly, 
That's why certain items were perceived to sell at 100 to 200 and they sold for 860 or 960 or $1,400. I don't worry about certain items in the pricing. I, I use my own prices. Some of the items that I sell, we've been selling so long that there's no sense in me looking at comp sales for most of them. Because again, I'm looking at, I'm comparing mine. Mine are on the top of the list. Again, it it's just takes time. That's all it takes to do and advance your business to a certain certain point like us. It takes time. And branching out, of course, is, is a big plus too. But uh, time is, is the number one thing that can help you grow your business. It's the time to develop it, the time to add enough listings in. Uh, that's all I can say. The difference between me and somebody just starting off, like some of the folks who said I've just started reselling, is time and learning how stuff works. Don't make the same mistake twice. That's another big one that I see. If you're making the same mistake two, three, four times, you're not learning at all, and you're just your 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 thought patterns uh, off off the, the the rails here. Don't make the same mistake twice is is another good one. So. You know, um, let's end it at that one. I do apologize. Carolina Picks, let me just see what he's... They said my items will not show up in searches, but I checked and they are still showing up. I guess I missed the first part to that. Uh, why did they tell you that, I guess, is the point. You can drop me a line, Carolina Picks, and Patreon if you have an issue and I can look into it. You can let me know. I'll be on tomorrow. So if you pop it in there tonight, Carolina Picks, I will see it first thing uh, in... Uh, before. Well, I'll get my mail done and then I'll be in Patreon. Um, I'll be setting up all the stuff for the live show tomorrow at, at uh, 12, I believe, for the two hours. I usually want to do it two hours in advance so I can get the first conversation notes done and stuff. So anyway... I do appreciate everybody coming on tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed the show. If you have not hit the like button, please pop that like button down there if you enjoyed the conversation. Again, I do try to get to all of the comments and questions, but I go straight down top to bottom. I do not get to everybody. do apologize, but I try to give you honest and sincere answers to everything I got going on. Hopefully everybody is doing well with their sales. My sales are still way up, as I have said. Uh, inventory, there's a ton of stuff out there to buy. Uh, so for those who have opened up, I don't think you're going to have a problem finding some good stuff. Everybody who I have talked to who has been outsourcing has scored some phenomenal items. And I have I do mean some really good items. So again, a lot of people haven't had um, the chance to source the high-end people. So everybody has a good option now to get some good things for a little while anyway. At least that's how I see it. Um, but again, have a good night. I appreciate y'all coming out. I got another interesting video coming up tomorrow.